Okay, guys, we're going to do 1.4 now. Okay, so it says Leah wants to invi um, investigate whether it is cheaper to wash her laundry at home or to take it to Quickity Wash Laundry Mat. Okay, she has an average of 6 kgs of laundry per week. Okay, so most high-efficiency washing, machine, washing machines, sure, let's try to say that five times quickly, <laughs> use only 15 to 30 gallons. Okay, this is like this weird conversion, right? So gallons are larger than liters, okay, um, of water per load. Okay, so it says Leah checks on her washing machine and it says that her machine uses 45 gallons of water per load, okay? Then it says, using the conversion table below, determine how many liters that is. Round your answer to the nearest liter. Okay, so they've given us one mil gives us this many gallons, okay? So one mil is a very small um, portion, right, of a gallon. So we know that we have 45 gallons on this side and we want to figure out how many milliliters it is first, right? And then we have to convert that to liters, right? Because they've asked us to the nearest liter. So there's two parts to this question. So we need to figure that out, okay? So what we need to do is we need to figure out what we have to multiply this side by to get to 45. And then we multiply one by that same amount and then we'll get the number of milliliters. Then we can convert that into liters. Okay, so the easiest way to find out what we had to do to 45, what we had to do to this, sorry, to get to 45 is we say 45 divided by that amount. Okay, right? And that will give us the number of what this number here that we had to multiply it by. Okay, so 45 divided by 0 0.123264. 172. So we have to multiply it by a real big number. Okay. Don't round it off here because this is not a final answer. So that is what goes in that little guy. But whatever we do to the one side of a ratio, we have to do to the other. So we have to times one by this, right? But one times by this is going to be itself. So we know that that is going to be this many milliliters, okay? But we also know that a thousand milliliters equals one liter. So to, to convert this into liters, we have to divide it by a thousand. Now, I know sometimes what causes confusion with students is they don't know when to divide or when to multiply, right? So what we're doing here, and the reason we divided here is because we wanted to find out what we needed to multiply by, okay? Because we know that we have to this, multiply this by something to get a 45, right? So that's why we use this. Always remember that divide and times are opposites, right? So we use them to um, interchangeably, right? Because we need them to find different things within ratios. So that's why we did that here. Here, we're dividing by 1,000 because we're moving from a small measure to a larger measure. So we're expecting there to be fewer liters, right, than milliliters, right? And that makes sense because if I say to you, I only have one liter of Coke, actually a thousand milliliters of Coke, right? So I have a lot more milliliters than I do liters, okay? So we take this and we divide by a thousand. And that gives us, right, how many liters, I'm just gonna do it to two decimal places, we have, right? That's how many, how many liters this 45 gallons equals, okay? But what did they ask us? They asked us to work it out to the nearest liter. So to the nearest liter would be 170 liters, okay? It's important that you answer the question that's been given, right? You're demonstrating that you're reading and you're understanding, and then you're also demonstrating your understanding of the question. Okay, this is sometimes a tricky one. If you're not getting that, rewind and watch it again, but don't worry about it, okay? It's just one of these things you have to break down into pieces, right, and approach it very methodically, okay? So let's now move on to this next question, okay? 
The next question, let me just check you and see what I'm seeing. The next question says, the table below indicates the tariff for water where Leah lives. Okay, so what it's saying is obviously when you wash your clothes, you have to use water. She's figured out how much water she has to use, right? So now she wants to figure out how expensive it is. Okay, so in the table, um, the percentage increase for zero to six kil um, kiloliters, right, is indicated as 15.9%. By using calculations, show whether the value is incorrect or correct. Okay, so... We know that it's gone from, if we're interpreting this table, it's gone from this price to this price. Okay, do you see that? Two different years, right? This is what it was in the first year for this interval that they're telling us about. And it's increased, okay? So we're going to say 8.28 minus 7.14 to figure out how much it's increased by, okay, in rands and cents. Okay, so it's increased by 1.14 rand. But we want to work out the percentage, right? So we say 1.14, which is the increase, over 7.14, which is what it originally was, right? Which is that amount in this year, right? Then we're going to times that by 100. Why am I times it by 100? Because, right, that is how we work out a percentage. Then what we do, oh, goodness, I typed that in a bit weirdly. Um, we go, we type that into our calculator, and it gives us a percentage. So I'm getting 15.97%. Okay? Now, what's interesting here is that does not equal 15.9. Right? If I round that off to the nearest percent, it's actually equivalent to 16%. Do you see that, right? So therefore, it's incorrect, right? 15.9 is not correct, okay? And that is how we go about doing it. It's five marks, right? So there's a lot of moving pieces here, but it's just you wanting to demonstrate that you understand how to calculate. This is basically a markup, right? It's an increase over a time period. They're wanting you to demonstrate that you understand and then to compare it to a point they gave you. Okay, so that's that question. Let's now move on to 1.4.3. It says use the 2018-2019 tariff in the table to show that Leah would be paying less than five rand per week for water if she did her laundry at home. Her washing machine has the capacity to wash two kgs of laundry per load okay so what is important here right is we need to firstly remember that it is 170 liters right that she uses in a wash now you could be saying where does that come from from 1.4.1 it says leah checks her washing machine and it says that her washing machine uses 45 gallons per load okay so what i've done here is i've written just to remind us, right, of how much water she uses per load. Now, a load is only 2 kgs, okay? But how much washing does Leah have, right? If we go back to the original question, it says she has 6 kgs, okay? So if she has 6 kgs, right, we need to figure out how many loads she's going to have to um, put in the, in the week, during the week. So we divide that by two, which gives us three loads. Okay, so she's going to have three sets of 170 liters for these three loads. But what's important here is these tariff tables are in kiloliters. Do you see that? It's not in liters, right? So we have to convert this 170 liters into kiloliters so that we can use the tariff table. So importantly, a thousand liters equals one kiloliter. So we say 170 divided by a thousand, right? You can check this in your calculator if you don't believe me, right? It gives us this many kiloliters. I'm dividing it by a thousand because I'm going from a smaller measure to a larger measure, and then I divide. So that's how many kiloliters she needs for one load, right? So I'm going to write there per load, okay? 
but she has three loads, right? So you're going to say 0 0.17 times 3, which is 0 0.51 kiloliters per week. Okay. So now, now we know how much she needs per week, right? And that's what they asked us to figure out how much it costs her per week. We know that that's where, how much she pays. So let's go see what interval she fits into. So she fits into the first interval, right? Because she only has a little bit. She doesn't even have one full kiloliter, right? It's half a kiloliter or around a half a kiloliter. So we know that she's going to be paying 8,28, right? Per kiloliter, right? So we're going to say 8,28 because that's the tariff from the year they asked us, right? Times the amount of water she uses. Put that into your calculator, right? Make sure you type it in correctly. I have a bad habit of typing it incorrectly, okay? And I rounded off to two decimal places. Remember, I did that because we're talking about a currency. Currencies, we always round off to two decimal places. So that's how much she pays per week, which is less than five rand, okay? Which is what they asked us to prove. So we've answered the question, okay? Again, very methodical. An important thing here is we use information from previous questions. Don't always just look to the current question for all the information you need. Sometimes the previous questions will help you with questions that come after them. Okay, so don't be like, oh my goodness, they haven't given me all my information. They have. They're just asking you to work on a problem continuously over numerous different questions. Okay, let's now move on to 1.4.4. Okay, so 1.4.4 says once Leah calculated the cost of the water, she realized she needed to add 129 rand for washing powder and electricity. Determine the co total cost per week for Leah to do her laundry. So this is how much she has to pay per week, right, for water, um, for electricity and washing powder, right? And then we have to add that to the water. So there's the water. There's the electricity and washing powder, okay? Because remember, a washing machine uses electricity to run. So the total amount, I'm not sure why they gave us the most amount of space here, but there you have it, right? The total amount she would pay for that is 133 rand and 22 cents, okay? That's how much she would pay if she did her washing at home, taking into consideration all costs that she would incur around cleaning her own clothes. But it obviously doesn't include labor and the schlep and all that stuff, but it's just that, okay? That's what it is from a monetary perspective that you can quantify. Then it says, if the decision is based on cost, right? And that's important because it could be cost, it could be based on convenience, it could be based on a lot of things. But here it's saying it's purely on the numbers, right? We don't really care about anything else. It's purely about the numbers. State whether it is cheaper for Leah to go to the laundry, to do her laundry at home, or to take it to the laundromat. Give a reason for your answer. So now we know that when she's at home, it's this much. Okay, we just calculated that. But how much was it when she went to the laundromat? Now, we have to go back to this question. Okay, I know that it said 5.5 here, right? And Leah has six. But remember that 5.5, you charge the same amount as six. So she would pay 136 rand for the laundry mat um, washing, right? So we're comparing 136 rand. So I'm going to say the laundry mat is 136 rand, okay? And doing it at home is 133 rand and 22 cents. So cheaper, the cheaper option is at home, okay? And we can say why is it cheaper? Because we can say 136. Minus 133.22, right? She saves two rand and 78 cents. Okay, and that's your reason, okay? That's your reason. So that question was, I mean, there were a lot of moving parts. There was conversion, there was tariffs, there was a lot of sort of calculating costs and comparing costs. A great question, but sometimes can be quite overwhelming and quite confusing. But again, just go about it quite methodically and you should be okay. Okay, I hope that was helpful. We're going to move on to 1.5 now and we're making good progress through this paper. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.